So this is the first television in the world that uses self power to say. It is all in one. You don't need to put it on electricity or on solar panel or anything. As it is, it is a complete solution. What if I told you that right now, in a small workshop in Zimbabwe, not America, not China, not Europe, African engineers have just redefined the future of global technology. A television that runs forever, without ever being plugged in. No wires, no electricity bills, no solar panels, just air, vibrations, and African brilliance. This isn't science fiction. It's happening, and it could change the world. This is the story of Africa's silent tech revolution. In a quiet corner of Zimbabwe, a team of local engineers have done what most thought was impossible. They've built a self-powered television, a device that runs continuously for 60,000 days without needing to be plugged into the grid, without batteries, and without even a single solar panel. Let that sink in. We're talking about a television that generates its own energy. In a world grappling with climate change, blackouts, energy poverty, and rising utility costs, this isn't just an invention, it's a revolution. It looks like any other sleek flat screen, but its true genius lies beneath the frame. A multi-source ambient energy converter. It silently harvests energy from its surroundings, radio waves, electromagnetic fields, atmospheric vibrations, and environmental frequencies, and transforms them into usable electricity. No noise, no pollution, no cost, no dependency. An American electrical engineer with three decades of experience flew in to investigate. He came expecting trickery, he left in awe. He dismantled the TV. No hidden batteries, no external power, just pure, self-sustaining innovation. The lead engineer from Zimbabwe isn't chasing fame. His goal was simple, solve local problems. In Zimbabwe and many parts of Africa, consistent access to electricity is still a luxury. Power cuts are common, bills are high, and even basic appliances are out of reach for many. So instead of waiting for help from the West, these engineers took matters into their own hands. They didn't build this TV to impress Silicon Valley. They built it so that a grandmother in rural Mutoko, or a student in northern Ghana, or a child in the Sahel can access information, entertainment, and education without depending on colonial infrastructures or foreign donors. Uh, this is our self-powered TV that we have uh, designed. The first in the world to have such kind of a technology where a television is powered with a radio frequency. So as you can see right now, I'm powering this television. Uh, so this is the first uh, television in the world that uses self-power to say. It is all in one. You don't need to put it on electricity or on solar panel or anything. As it is, it is a complete solution. Behind the television, you can see that there is a microsonic energy device, this box. This is the device that is converting radio frequencies into pure energy. As you can see, the power of the cable was supposed to be here. On all traditional televisions, power comes here, but there's no power as you can see. The television is it is working as it is. So in Lyman, I think this television is a, we can call it a, a self-powered television. This invention is more than a TV. It's a declaration. Africa will no longer sit at the back of the tech bus. Since news of the invention broke, foreign tech giants from Silicon Valley, South Korea, and Germany have come knocking, offering to buy the patents, to partner, to scale. But the Zimbabwean inventors have stood firm. This time, Africa will not sell out. This technology will stay African, be developed in Africa, and serve African communities first. Licensing, yes. Exploitation, no. For too long, the continent has been treated like a market, not a maker. But that narrative is collapsing. This TV is just the beginning. The team has confirmed that self-powered laptops, lighting systems, even mobile communication networks are already in prototype stages. That means, in the near future, 
an entire household could run, independently of the grid. Clean, silent, autonomous energy. Built in Africa. For Africa. Imagine. A continent leapfrogging past fossil fuels, past unreliable grids, past exploitative energy companies, into a future where power is free, clean, and locally controlled. The environmental implications are massive. If millions of homes switched to this tech, the carbon footprint of Africa could be slashed dramatically without sacrificing development. But this moment is bigger than just Zimbabwe. This is a pan-African moment. It's a reminder that we, as a continent, hold the power to shape our destiny. We don't need permission. We don't need validation. We don't need the IMF or the World Bank to tell us what we're capable of. The spirit of innovation lies right here, in our people, our soil, our genius. Inventors and innovators from Africa have, at times, mysteriously gone missing or been silenced. While each case has its unique circumstances, this troubling trend is tied to a deeper set of political, economic, and systemic factors that impact African inventors disproportionately. One major reason is the suppression by powerful interests. Many African inventors create technologies that are not only groundbreaking, but also potentially disruptive to global industries, particularly in areas like energy, medicine, and telecommunications. When an invention threatens the profit margins of billion-dollar corporations or questions the control held by foreign powers, inventors may find themselves targeted. These responses can range from defamation and smear campaigns to actual disappearances, forced patent takeovers, or accidents that raise more questions than answers. Another layer of threat comes from state interference. Governments, especially those with authoritarian tendencies, often view powerful innovations as security concerns, especially when those inventions are developed independently and without government oversight. In some cases, inventors are approached by state security agencies, detained under vague pretexts or pressured to align with state interests. If an inventor refuses, their safety, freedom, or even their life may be in danger. Africa also suffers from a lack of protective infrastructure for inventors. Weak intellectual property laws, limited access to legal representation, and the absence of continental patent systems leave many innovators exposed. This lack of protection makes it easy for large corporations or political players to either steal ideas or silence the people behind them. Without robust legal and institutional backing, inventors remain vulnerable to exploitation or erosion. The situation is made worse by media blackouts and misinformation. When a powerful African invention surfaces, like a machine that doesn't need electricity, or a medical solution that challenges pharmaceutical monopolies. It's often ignored by global media. Worse still, disinformation campaigns may label these inventions as fake, unscientific, or scams, tarnishing the inventor's reputation and making them easier to silence without public scrutiny or resistance. Beyond corporate and government threats, there are also geopolitical factors at play. As Africa begins asserting itself, as not just a consumer, but a creator of technology, the global balance of power is shifting. Inventors who choose not to sell out to foreign interests are sometimes blacklisted or approached with shady collaboration deals that amount to intellectual theft. In some tragic cases, they are never heard from again. Several examples underscore this troubling trend. Maxwell Chikambutso the Zimbabwean inventor behind the self-powered television and generator, reported being surveilled and threatened after refusing foreign buyouts. In other cases, African inventors gained viral attention online, only to suddenly disappear from the public eye under mysterious circumstances. These aren't isolated stories, they point to a dangerous pattern. What's needed is urgent, pan-African protection mechanisms that transcend borders strong continental patent systems, and significant public awareness to ensure inventors are protected through visibility. Above all, Africa must begin investing in African ideas, financially, politically, and socially, 
so inventors no longer need foreign validation to succeed. At the core of this issue is a reality many don't want to face. African inventors are not being targeted because they're dangerous, but because they're powerful. And that power, when not under control or ownership by global elites, is perceived as a threat. But if Africa is serious about its independence and sovereignty, then protecting its inventors must become a top priority, because ideas are the real weapons of liberation. Governments must wake up, protect these innovators, fund their work, embed this technology in schools, clinics, and homes. Let this TV be the spark that lights up an entire movement. And to the youth watching this, know this, your ideas are valid. Your brilliance is real. The world is waiting. And Africa is rising. This TV doesn't just challenge science. It challenges systems. It questions why the world has underestimated Africa for so long. But that era is over. So we ask, what if your phone never needed to be charged? What if your entire village could run on ambient air? What if the next tech empire didn't come from California, but from Kigali, Accra, or Harar? The self-powered television is a message to the world. Africa is not waiting anymore. We are building. We are leading. We are illuminating the future. If you believe in this vision, like this video, Share it with every African innovator you know, and let's keep the conversation going in the comments. The future is African, and the world better get used to it.